And I think we should all be grateful to Lucy in Bushy this morning, not only the first entry into Idiot's Corner, but a beautiful illustration of something that you may not even have noticed yourself. So Lucy's been in touch already to say, oh, here we go, you're off again. The question is about the Prince of Wales, although to... I suppose the amusement of everybody involved, you've managed to insert an unnecessary H into the word Wales there, which is <laughs> certainly distracting, uh, speaking out, but you spin it your way. Well, the point is that nobody seemed to notice um, the unprecedented public statement from the Prince and Princess of Wales um, at the beginning of October. And the use of the word unprecedented here is not my own. It comes from the Jewish news. And it was with reference to the condemnation of Hamas. So I'm looking at the inbox that I've inherited from Nick, who I'm sure mentioned this, the fact that it's not unprecedented at all and that the Prince of Wales had issued an unequivocal condemnation of Hamas. But I'm looking at the inbox I've inherited and it's full of people saying, why hasn't he condemned Hamas? Why hasn't he, why hasn't he called for the hostages to be released? And then you've got people like Lucy and Bushy thinking that this intervention is unprecedented and that because he's essentially called upon Israel to stop killing Palestinians, something extraordinary has happened, something both significant and newsworthy. And yet this, described by the Jewish news as unprecedented public statement from the Prince and Princess of Wales, who, quotes hold all the victims, their families and their friends in their hearts and minds, while utterly condemning, quotes again, the Hamas attacks on Israel, for the avoidance of any doubt, whatsoever quite correct quite and completely correctly um nobody noticed certainly didn't make the front page of the daily mail what would they have said prince risks controversy i don't know it just wouldn't be controversial at all please don't kill people if you are killing people you're disgusting he doesn't go that far um in fact, he doesn't really go very far at all. So we're left with the question, perhaps, as to why some people, and oddly, they are people who routinely use the word snowflake as a pejorative, have got their knickers in such a twist about Prince William essentially saying, hey, too many people have died, guys. Why can't we all just get along? It's the most vanilla of interventions, and yet it is something that is... Um, apparently controversial. The Prince and Princess of Wales are profoundly distressed by the devastating events that have unfolded in the past days. The horrors inflicted by Hamas's terrorist attack upon Israel are appalling. They went further. They said that as Israel exercises its right of self-defense, all Israelis and Palestinians will continue to be stalked by grief, fear and anger in the time to come. They added that they hold all the victims, their families and their friends in their hearts and minds and spoke of the uh, necessity of Israel defending itself. Now, there's something quite strange happening there, isn't there? I, I don't know what you or who you've been relying on for your coverage of Prince William's intervention, but if it's the Daily Mail, you'd think this was the first time in history that anybody from the royal family had said anything at all about the situation in the Middle East, let alone the last five months, let alone the last 16, 17 weeks. But there it is described as unprecedented by the Jewish news. And yet I turn to the front of the Daily Mail today and it says Prince risks controversy with impassioned and unprecedented intervention and says, like others, I want an end to the fighting. So anyone calling it unprecedented is, is lying to you. I think it perhaps was unprecedented on October the 10th when he actually weighed in behind Israel's right to respond robustly to that terror attack on October the 7th. But to say now... Can it stop, please? There is a desperate need. Let's run through it, shall we? You can tell how bad things are because the Daily Mail have had to do one of those things where they uh, run lines on what he actually said and then they put another paragraph underneath it on what they, they say what it means. Can you imagine what that's like? So here's what he said. Oh, and here's what it means. It means that if your nan still reads the Daily Mail, she's not reading what Prince William said. She's reading what the editor of the Daily Mail wants you to think that Prince William said. What he said, what it means. It happened to me once, although only online. One of my first um, ill-advised forays into conversation uh, about trans people and about gender-neutral changing rooms. I had no idea how hot that topic was. We're going back a few years now. Then about six months later, I found this thing online where someone had rung in and done an entire transcript of the conversation 
um, using red ink to tell me what I'd really meant. So I would have said, good morning. And then in red ink, it'd say, what he really means is, go to hell, you monstrous human. And then I, I would say, what would you like to talk about today? And then in red ink, what he really means, I hate you and everything you stand for. And all women are awful. I mean, it was just insane. But an early indicator, a canary down the coal mine, perhaps, of where the so-called debate about transgender people and their human rights would go in the months to follow. But they've done it to Prince William today. I remain deeply concerned uh, about the terrible human cost of the conflict in the Middle East since the Hamas terrorist attack on October the 7th. Too many have been killed. Um, What is wrong with that? Where, where, Where does that go? In any sense that could be described as controversial? Well, I'll tell you. It is controversial in the same way that the condemnation of the Hamas terrorist attack last year was controversial, because it means he is offering an opinion. Full stop. He is offering an opinion. And the opinion, I think, can be loosely construed as not subscribing to the notion that Benjamin Netanyahu's government should be able to do whatever they want in Gaza, up to and including, according to one member of his own cabinet, dropping a nuclear bomb on the territory. So what Prince William has highlighted, I think, today is the difficulty of saying anything at all in the crucible of right-wing American and British media, largely driven by Rupert Murdoch with the Daily Mail and Andrew Neil's ridiculous spectator lobbling along not far behind, saying anything remotely critical of Israel will get you a kicking. So what the Mail does now is desperately try to recast these words, which are saying essentially, please stop killing people. And obviously Hamas are disgusting too, as being less than a call for a cessation of hostilities. So he says, I, like so many others, want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. What do you think that means? Can you think of a single word that describes an end to the fighting? I mean, is there a word? I'll give you a clue. It rhymes with lease pyre. Can you think of a word that rhymes with lease pyre and would essentially describe an end to the fighting as soon as possible? No? All right, I'll carry on. Um, He also says there is a desperate need for increased humanitarian support to Gaza. It's critical that aid gets in and that hostages are released. So I'm still reading text saying, why doesn't he call for the hostages to be released? I'm not telling you what he means. I'm just asking you if you can think of another word to describe calling for an end to the fighting as soon as possible and suggesting that it might rhyme with um, peace liar or lease pyre. I don't know. But the mail are telling you that he pointedly stops short of calling for the immediate ceasefire demanded by the left, which critics warned could allow Hamas to rearm. In a balanced statement, he underlines the desperate need to relieve, relieve human suffering in Gaza while also calling on Hamas to release the remaining hostages. Look at the size of that knot that you've tied yourself into. So he is actually calling for an immediate end to the fighting, but he's definitely not calling for a ceasefire because that's what the left is doing. I hate to break it to you, lads, but he categorically is calling for a ceasefire, albeit with the obvious addition that Hamas should release the hostages as well. The difference, as ever, since the beginning of this nightmare, the difference is that if you accept the portrayal as Hamas as a death cult or a terrorist group, then you cannot expect them or or, or demand somehow that they behave in a rational and law-abiding fashion. You categorically can demand the same of an ally like Israel. And he is. Um, It's extraordinary, really, isn't it, that you would need to, when this statement would have been poured over, picked over, uh, carefully contemplated, it would have gone across various desks before it found its way into the public space. But the Daily Mail still takes it upon itself to tell its readers what they think Prince William must really mean because his words are not clear enough. Incredible, really. Um, I want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. How how, how much wiggle room is there there, do you think? How big is the grey area? I want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. So the point I'm making in my 
characteristically clumsy fashion is this, all right? The controversy here is not about Prince William offering up an opinion because he offered up an unprecedented, not my words, the Jewish news, he offered up an unprecedented and a um, powerful condemnation of Hamas after the October the 7th terror attack. So there is nothing unprecedented about calling for a ceasefire. So what's happened today across much of the British media is that people have got their knickers in a twist about Prince William apparently allying himself with the idea that Israel should not be allowed to continue to do whatever it wants in the Gaza Strip, up to and obviously including a ground offensive on Rafa, which pretty much the entire world is now united against. Even as America vetoes a call for a ceasefire from the United Nations, they effectively call upon Benjamin, well, not effectively, explicitly call upon Benjamin Netanyahu not to start a ground uh, offensive against Rafa. We spoke to a young woman yesterday, a 21-year-old Irish-Palestinian woman who gave us a tiny idea, a tiny, the tiniest inkling of what it must be like to have already moved four, five, six times and now being told that your final place of sanctuary is about to get blasted too. So that's what he's done. That's why he's upset some of the usual suspects. He has, he has offered an opinion that is not aligned with theirs. It is instead aligned with the immeasurable majority of the British people, only 13% of whom, I think, um, support the idea of further offensives in Gaza by Israel. Some polling that, again, probably has been absented from much of the coverage of Prince William's intervention. And I still have in the back of my mind that um, sense of how ridiculous all this is. And I mean, why would the intervention of a, of a very well-educated, but by his own admission, not super bright human being, have such weight, carry such force in the context of something as complicated and as bloody as the continuing carnage in Gaza? It, it is mad, but that's the country that we live in. You, and I hate, to think that this is news to you, but you are his future subject, all being well. You will be his subject one day, a subject of his monarchical rule. So to suggest that we shouldn't pay any attention to what he has to say about anything is seductive but ridiculous. You kind of have to. And it does change things. It does put into perspective the, um, shall we say, the lack of nuance or the uh, rather monopolistic coverage of the conflict that you have received or that we read everywhere. Because if 13% of the population are uh, against it and 80% of the print media are essentially cool with it, someone's got to step into that space, wave a little flag of truth. The question I've got for you today is whether or not it should be Prince William. So I'm going to be hugely ambitious on this. I'm going to try to conduct this conversation independently of what you think about the conflict in Gaza. I am almost certainly going to fail, but there is no point in not aiming high. As the great Samuel Beckett once wrote, fail, fail again, fail better. So today we will fail. Tomorrow we will fail again. And on Friday, we will fail better. I've probably misremembered that quote, but in a sense, that would be quite apposite, wouldn't it? So here's the point. What I'd love to know is whether you think Prince William should be wading in at all, whether or not you prefer his grandmother's approach to monarchy and that you wouldn't even know what her favourite colour was or her favourite flower. You knew nothing about them. They often said, never let the light in. Prince Charles is a very different, King Charles, no less, is a very different creature. He proved to be quite prescient on matters environmental and even architectural, where much of the country was being encouraged by precisely the same people telling you what Prince William really meant when he called for a ceasefire in Gaza. Um, we're encouraging you to laugh at him and tease him about talking to trees and the rest of it. It turns out he was way ahead of the curve. So there's a strong case there for interventions from members of the royal family. I don't know that we're qualified today to have a conversation about whether it changes anything because that would just divide us along the lines of people who think it's hugely important um, whenever he breaks wind and people that frankly couldn't give a fig one way or the other. So I'm going to try and I am going to fail, but I am going to try to 
conduct this conversation from the perspective of his opinions not mattering, but his right to express them being questionable. So what do you think? I like it. I'm not going to lie to you. I like it. I like the idea of somebody with the benefit of having very little skin in any game, albeit that they're still terrified of being attacked by the right wing. I wouldn't be surprised if Nigel Farage has had a swing at him already, while presumably staying relatively silent about the murder of Alexei Navalny by the uh, monster that he, Nigel Farage, considers to be the most adm admirable politician in the world. So you will paint a target on your back if you're King Charles or Prince William in this kind of context. But what's the point of having them? I like the last queen. I think she was very much the right monarch for our ages. But what's the point of having one of the most famous public figures on the planet if they're not allowed ever to tell you what they think about something? So I thank God he condemned the Hamas attack on October the 7th. And thank God today he's calling for a ceasefire, even though the Daily Mail are desperate to pretend that he isn't. 03456060973. And if you just want a quick indicator of how boiled the brains of a lot of the people leading these conversations actually are, imagine for a moment what would be before you today on your television screens, coming out of your radio speakers, in your morning newspaper, if Prince Harry had expressed the desperate need for increased humanitarian support to Gaza. If Prince Harry had said that I, like so many others, want to see an end to the fighting as soon as possible. So he might not like it, but thank God Prince William is finally beginning to behave a bit like his brother.